If you enjoyed this episode, please support this podcast by going to talkmurder.com slash join and becoming a Taco Supremo. Hey, Tacos, bundle up because tonight we're working abroad hoping to catch an uncatchable serial killer. Already claiming 40 victims, this muzik gets his jollies by sneaking in your window and snatching your grannies up. Yep, that's right. Known to police as the granny sadist, this shuvak likes his women aged like fine Russian vodka and his bloody lust for geriatric gore marks this pubescent barely any hair down there as the ultimate Bolga maniac. All right, so we're just going to jump right into tonight's story. We didn't, you didn't give me a hint. I so. didn't give you a hint, but I am drinking some vodka. Some Nipitati vodka? Yep. So the best. W- well, I'm drinking that because of the place we're going tonight. Russia? We are going to Russia. Wow, okay. I don't think we've done a Russian story no. ever. No, we have not. But we are going to the Volga River. Do you know where that's at? Mm, I don't. Russia is a pretty big country, so I am not familiar. I did have to memorize, though, um, back when I I took a politics of Russia course when I was in college, because I was a poli-sci major, and it was hands down the most fascinating course I've ever taken but we had to learn all of the former um, Soviet countries oh, like, really? and we were quizzed on that so here's the Volga River right here it's uh, to the east of Ukraine and Belarus north and of Georgia north of Georgia and west of Kazakhstan which I've been to one time oh really I've been there and Kyrgyzstan um, which one's the one where Borat's from? And, is it Kazakhstan? Uh, um, he is from, I think it's Kazakhstan yeah. or Kyrgyzstan. I think Kazakhstan. I think I want to say. Yeah, I can't remember. His sister was like, my <laughs> sister's the number one prostitute in Kyrgyzstan. This is Natalia. She is my sister. She is number four prostitute in all of Kazakhstan. Man, that movie was so big when it came out. Yeah. So big. So here's the Volga River right here. It's freaking huge. Wow, that is a very wide river. This river has its own Google reviews. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, that's a lot of reviews. It has more reviews on this river than we do on this podcast. Yeah, holy shit. Oh my God. There's literally 5,000 reviews on there. I didn't know you can review a river. The Volga River is the longest river in Europe. Oh, that's a fun fact. And one of the Russia's most important rivers. Out of the 20 largest cities of Russia, 11, including its capital, Moscow, are situated on the Volga's drainage basin. Hmm. It originates at an elevation of only 225 meters, which is 740 feet, in the Valde Hills northwest of Moscow and discharges further into the Caspian Sea. The Volga River is great importance to in- inland shipping and transportation in Russia. So this is their lifeblood. Wow, that's quite the review from this person who yeah. Google reviews. <laughs> I didn't know you could review Oh a my gosh, it's got 4.7 stars on Google reviews with, oh my gosh, seven over almost 8,000 reviews. Yeah, what kind of asshole? I, I can oh. see things. <laughs> <laughs> by the, poop fart <laughs> <laughs> poop fart reviewed it at three stars <laughs> and he said I can see things Holy that was five shit. months ago someone else said it's pretty alright um, but Who, then another person yeah. said it's fantastic very I love bad it. Mustafi I says these it's are very bad real reviews or if these are paid reviews <laughs> who's gonna pay like, for this shit I don't know the Russian government this oh seems God. like something Putin would do yeah, he's busy doing other shit. Did you know shit. that one of the um so as I was saying there is I took a course in uh politics of Russia and it was 
fa- fascinating. Um, I mean, they would they do all this like propaganda stuff still in Russia, you know, and Putin had a contest of this like someone gifted him a puppy and he had this national contest of like what should he name his dog? Um, there's a video of him, you know, petting a Siberian tiger, like without a shirt. I mean, it's pretty wild. So tonight we're covering a serial killer called the Volga Maniac. Hmm. He has killed 32 females. Oh, wow. And he is on CCTV. His face is out there, yet no one knows Hmm. who this guy is at all. I want to say, isn't like the supposedly the most, I mean, we hear this word thrown around all the time, like the most prolific serial killers from Russia, like confirmed kills? Um, No, the most, I mean. I, I don't know. I have no idea what the guy's name is. No, but the I've, most confirmed kills would be like um, that dude from the Nazi guy. I mean, if you want to call yeah, him a serial yeah. killer. Um, but I want to say there was one and he, he's, it's like nearly a hundred confirmed. Oh, then we've covered way more than that. Con- like confirmed, confessed. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe. I I'm, mean, um, maybe it's Charles all just Colin, more... Tr- Charles Colin, the nurse of death we covered. He has way more than that. Well, that was not all of that's confirmed. Samuel Little, he's up there. Also, you have Harold Shipman. He's got a lot. We haven't covered um, him. I don't know much about him. Yeah, we've covered a lot of prolific serial killers. So this is actually a really crazy story because it's a serial killer, 32 victims, yet there is no information on this case Why? at all. Or was the Russian government trying to cover it up? I think the Russian government may be involved. Oh, that's also <laughs> common. That's a very common thing. And I'll talk about why I believe that in a minute. But this is it's crazy because this guy is on a rampage. What ye- like what year time frame are we talking? Because you would think that the government being involved in something like that is, oh, that's that's from the Soviet days. Oh, no. The KGB m- may not be in existence anymore, mm. but they have a new organ. It's, an, it's just new initials now. Yeah. Well, this isn't really a KGB type of assassination murder. Or anything. It may actually be a deranged serial killer, but it's from a one year period. Thirty two people. Wow. March. Yeah. March 2011 to September 2012 within wow. multiple Russian federations. I'm, oh, wow. So he was. Yeah. He, he's he was, a traveler. He was also he was popping right around that time I was taking that college course. Yeah, probably. Yeah, that was. You may was have even ran into him. 2000. 10 to 2011. No, I didn't. I never went to Russia. Oh, okay. Um, it Which was you wouldn't have to not worry about. really safe ba- even back then to travel. Well, if you would have ran into this guy anyway, you're not his type. Why? No, because I'm kind of you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because, you said that just so matter of factly. Well, you're not 75 to 90 years old. This well. is true. I, I guess I would feel pretty bad about myself. This is the That's granny slayer awful. of Russia. And he is. I mean, we've talked about preying on poor, innocent people, <laughs> you know, the the nurse or angels of death type killers. But I can't really think of one where the killer actively goes after elderly people yeah. without them being already in a hospital care. Well, no, they're not. And actually, is he just a really shitty serial killer? And he can no, only he's apparently get a really great serial killer. People? Because he's not been caught. I'll go over his... wow. Yeah, he's not been caught. We don't know who he is. And I'll go over his MO here in a second. But the reason the story is so crazy is because you can't even find the victim names anywhere. It's it's like the uh, Russians... I don't know if they're covering up. I just don't think they really care. Hmm. (laughs) I mean, he's killing old people. And I'll get into my thoughts about this later. But these are pensioners. You know, these are people on government pensions, which makes sense. You have Putin that doesn't want to pay these pensions, you know, hires this hitman Mm -hmm. to go out and start snuffing out these grannies. Mm -hmm. And that's it seems to be what's happening right now. That is I mean, I had to write a um, a thesis paper 
about um, journalists in Russia. And I mean, it was like I said, stuff from the movies where he, people would have their fingers cut off if they wrote something unfavorable oh, to yeah. the government. You know, like, I mean, it's prominent. Yeah. They'd kill We're people, here, kidnap man. people, chop off people's fingers so they wouldn't write another bad word. People I mean, talk shit about America, man. But I'm telling you, I've been to countries like that. And you've, I mean, mm-mm. dude, I, if you're a woman over in some of those countries I've been to, if you even look at a man, you could get stoned to death. You know, if you even look up instead of looking down when you're walking, you could get tortured and murdered by your husband and by the government. I'm not saying there's the best country in the world. We're definitely far from that shit. I think like Sweden is like the best <laughs> country, but this is a pretty damn good country compared. We doing all right. We're doing pretty good. And the, you know, the freedom, I'm telling you. Freedom. America. Fuck yeah. And I only say that because I've been all the shitholes. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, let's get right on into this crazy story. This is the Volga maniac. He is running rampant. Now, he only killed between that one year period between March 2011 and September 2012. He's, his first nine murders took place in Kazan. And I'm actually looking at um, some information on Kazan right now. It's one Kaz- of the... Um, Kazan. Kazan, yeah. It's it's actually one of the largest cities in Russia hmm. It's one of the most popular cities from what I've seen. A population of 1,245,000 oh. is about 500 miles east of Moscow. And have you ever have you ever heard of Kazan? I have not. So this not is Kazan familiar. right here. Oh, by the way, if you're new here, this is your first episode. Welcome to Talk Murder Me. And also I put all my sources, all my photos and a video that you have got to see because this is a serial killer, 32 victims, yet we have them on video. You got to see this. Go to talkmurder.com. is right there. And uh, click on the Volga Maniac post and follow along with us tonight. I have always wanted to go to Russia. There's... I've never been. Well, besides those little countries. Yeah. I've only, I've, I've made it as far as Poland. Yeah. East. Um, but I, I mean, I would like to go. It was definitely not s- still really hard to enter the country back in 2011, 2012, when I was over in Europe. But it seems, I mean, I would, I just like to, to visit, to learn and, um, you know, bring a lot of cash with you to pay people off still. And, yeah. you know, you'd be good. You'd yeah. be good. So this is the sixth most populous city in Russia. And actually it's the 2018 Spot for the uh, FIFA World Cup, which Americans don't give a shit about. <laughs> Wait, what year? 2018. Oh, really? FIFA World, yeah. Oh, I thought that was the same place where they had Sochi. Is it, near, it must be, is it near Sochi? No, that, that's the Olympics. I know. I thought they put oh, it in no, the no, same no. spot because they like couldn't build more than one venue. Oh, no, this was in um, Kazan, which we don't know about that over here because mm-hmm. we, we watch football, no, not football. football. Is, yeah, football is a different thing. So for tonight, I pulled together all the information I can. But like I said, even though it's a serial killer, there is hardly any information out there. And I'm not even talking web pages and newspapers in Russian, because even those that you can get translated with Google Translate, they're still not out there. It's literally like they don't give a shit about this serial killer, which is probably pretty accurate. I I think there's also a good deal of, I mean, it could just also be censorship. Like they don't want the press of um, a serial killer running around. Let's talk about this guy's M.O. And we know he's a man, obviously, because there is CCTV footage of this guy. He's not wearing a mask or anything. He's walking straight into apartment buildings. Now, Hmm. Obviously, these elderly ladies live alone. What What do you think his mo is? Just um, just give me a ballpark. I mean, I feel like why is he killing all these women? These elderly women because they're easy to kill. So he just likes to kill. He was actually. I mean, he could be robbing them. Like, is he targeting rich women who may have some jewels? No, because he is targeting pensioners. So those living off the government. So they don't have a lot of money. They don't have a lot of money, no. And they're in kind of the lower end apartments in Russia. They all live alone, obviously. Is he into like a freaky deaky stuff? 
from what the Russians put out, and like you said, they may be censoring it. I don't think so. Even hmm. though pol- even though Russian police did call him quote a granny sadist, which hmm. is, but I don't think that means he's sexually, sexually assaulting them. them. But I will tell you, he's not taking any of the money or jewelry found in uh. the apartments. It's actually a really crazy M.O. So here's what he does. He goes into these little apartment buildings and he actually has a sheet of paper, well, a few sheets of paper with names on them from what we can see in the CCTV video, which you're about to watch, of pensioners, basically elderly women living off the government pensions. And he poses as a maintenance worker in the apartment building. Whatever apartments he's in, he goes, knocks up to the door. He pretends he's maintenance, housekeeping, you want mint on pillow type of shit, you know. (laughs) And then that's where he gets in. And basically, these old grandmas just let him in the door. These are 75-year-old ladies to 90. Most of them ranging in the 90 It just doesn't make any... I mean, he hasn't been caught, so I know I... We can't get answers. Was like, why would somebody target that group of people? Well, he strangles the women with their own household items. He's oh. used a bathrobe, a belt, a pillowcase. He's used clotheslines, even an iron cord. Ooh, yeah. So he he never brings his own stuff, but he does use stuff at the house. Interesting. And honestly, he's not really worried about his DNA. And he's escaping. not coming in the middle of the night. He's coming in broad daylight. He's coming in broad daylight. Yeah. And the Russian police actually have his DNA on file. In 2012, one of his last murders, he left his DNA on a handkerchief and a flashlight. So basically, his fingerprints is uh, skin cells or whatever with the DNA in it. So we have his DNA. It (laughs) obviously is not in any database at all, but he's not really worried about almost like he's not worried about getting caught, Hmm. which is why I think the government is funding this guy to do this. Because as you'll see in the video, he brings a list of people to kill. Like oh. a kill list. <laughs> that's what I'm saying here. Just oh, we'll watch the video. I will oh, show you the yeah. video in a second. That's coming together now. If you want to read this, this is from Alexander Shuga. He is the senior assistant to the head of Svergatsky Region Investigative Committee. The police are after a serial killer who murders lonely elderly women. A criminal investigation is launched under Article 105, Murder of the Russian Criminal Code. So he leaves the money and jewelry behind. Police dubbed him as a sadist because he has no interest in the money. So obviously he's killing for some sort of pleasure, Mm -hmm. even though I didn't see anywhere where he's sexually assaulting these old ladies. And he also leaves behind personal items around the body, which is really weird. You like, would... for instance, an ID card. So if you go kill someone here in America, you take their wallet, take their driver's license out, and then put it on their body. That's kind of what he's doing over there. And he uses, if he can't find the ID card, he uh, puts medical records or whatever. It's just really odd how why he's doing that well it's we know it's targeted but it feels to me and maybe this is just because i've seen like too many jason Bourne movies but you would think that if it's a hitman you know contracted by the government or something like that that it would be as if no one knew it was a murder you know what i mean like it would be They died of natural causes, and we would not even be talking about this. Yeah, but here's the thing with that. There are surviving witnesses that he he actually got spooked, heard someone coming. Hmm. There's a couple that the family members actually showed up, and he had to abort the mission and stuff like that. So it's not like they're dying of elderly causes when there's this strange man running out of their apartment, you know, and he's, no, but yeah. I, I mean, even for the people though who he had killed, I've, I maybe that's just again me um, watching too many movies about Mission Impossible, or I don't know that you would think that a government involvement would be super way more stealth. Yeah, so here's the CCTV video. 
just watch this, and I think this will explain okay. a lot better this guy's M.O. Go to talkmore.com. You do not want to miss this video. You have to see it. This is just a broad view, what you're seeing. You see the Volga maniac walking through the parking lot. The date on this is 2012, September 26th at 3.30 p.m. He is walking up the stairs. We see him right there. You see that list in his hand? It's literally like he has a clipboard with names on it. He is walking up the stairs right now with the list in his hand. I want to pause it for just a second because you saw him walking up the stairs. I want to point out that once he he was killing victims within all floors of the apartment. However, in 2012, one of the uh, victim's family members showed up and they could hear the rustling in the doors. Help me. And the, the old granny is screaming. So the uh, family busts down the door and the Volga maniac leaps off the balcony hmm. and he's on the third floor. Wow. So after that, he created a new rule for himself that he never kills over the second floor. Oh, so if you're now, if you're, you know, below the third floor, then you have to worry. But if you're above, you're safe because he's not going to kill you because he doesn't want to go in that situation again. I think he got really hurt. So it almost makes me think that it is a, a like KGB wannabe and not actually the KGB. I'll get to this in a minute, but he might actually be a copycat because this isn't the first person that was killing using this same MO Ah. and that person was actually caught. So this may be a copycat. You know, He looks like, between the video and the sketch, he looks like a combination of um, Ringo from the Beatles and uh, Spock. Yeah. From Star Wars. (laughs) Yeah, police describe him as Asian descent. They actually have a pretty good idea. He's got like a bowl cut. Yeah, they actually have a pretty good idea of what village he comes from. And I'll get to that here in a second because I can't pronounce it without looking at it. And he's knocking on the door right now to he's see if they're young. answering. You see him flipping pages like he's Who, got a list on, here. Who's here? Yeah. So I, maybe he hacked into some sort of government database just to find who who is on this government assistance. Yeah, I don't know. But here's a crazy little photo I found. This is actually a wanted poster in Russian. Obviously, you can't read it because it's all in Russian, but kind of cool. Yeah, that is cool. Um, now, check this. He looks this. young. He, yeah, right? he, well, he's probably 25 in his 30s. to around yeah. this time, 25 to 35, I believe, yeah. was the age. And I want to say, and I'm going to get to this in a little bit. He abruptly stopped in 2012 after he almost got caught and he went silent. But recently here in 2018, he started back up again. And we've hmm. seen this kind of behavior in people like the Golden State Killer and stuff like that. You, once if you're a serial killer, you don't just stop, you know. You may take a break or a hiatus, but you're probably going to keep going until you get too old, like the Golden State Killer, and, you know, decide to spend time on your grandchildren and stuff like that. But check this video out. Tell me what you think about this. Go to talkmore.com. This is a crazy video here. This is more CCTV footage. So there we see his face. Oh, you get a pretty damn good look at his yeah, face. Yeah, you see his face. You see Holy his hair. Holy shit. Yeah, quite the bulk. And you see, he's kind of looking through the door right there, and he does not notice the camera. But when he does, see, he's looking at the camera Uh-oh. now. It's he's like, like, "Oh, dude!" Oh, he knows. He it's tries over to cover shoulder. his face. You see that? He's l- he looking looks down. down. Yeah. Yeah. He sees the camera. It's one of those. I don't know if it. He can, It's like, obviously sense not one it. of those ring cameras that are over here, but it's kind of like the same thing, like yeah. doorbell camera. So he kind of notices it, and he looks down, but. That's as much as he's doing as far as not trying to get caught. And then he walks away and he goes to a different uh, apartment building. You'll see him getting in the elevator. This is the um, elevator right there. He's got that clipboard full of names. And this is a pretty high definition of video. Oh, my God. You can see his face so clearly. You can see his face, guys. This is probably the first time in history where we have a serial killer that you can see his face. Oh, my God. And it's not grainy CCTV. This is like high definition 
CCTV. Oh, Do you my see? goodness. He opens the elevator. He notices the camera. He's got so a little baby mustache. He's, he got, shuts like a, the he's camera. got like a puberty mustache. There he is coming in again. He's just very what? weird and just. How have they not caught this guy? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Well, you know, I was thinking a lot about that. You know, how have they not caught this guy? He may be one of those people, like, for instance, Charles Sabraj. Yeah. The uh, Charles Sabraj, the Serpentine story that we did. That was a great story. He he was basically not registered to any country until he was like 25. You know, Mm -hmm. so he could be the same way. He could not be registered. He could not have any documentation, any information. He could have been living on the streets. And you would think that with such clear image of his face that just by putting pictures and putting that on the news that people would recognize him be like yo i saw that guy at the de- at the corner <sighs> deli i mean well when he you know? does when this video did come out and they did push it on the uh, media a little bit is when he moved locales and he went to a different uh, how uh, far federation away? Oh. about 400 miles oh yeah sizable he doesn't seem like he's coming from wealth because you see he's kind of wearing a straggly hoodie. hoodie. Could just be but yet he's not stealing any of the money after he's strangling these women. Plus the fact that he's got that clipboard with the <sighs> names on it, it makes me think that uh, old Putin boy is involved in this somehow because like, they don't want to keep paying out these pensions. Now, they believe he comes from the Udmurtia region of Russia. Don't ask me because I don't know what the hell. I do know that it is the home of the Kalashkinov rifle. Do you know what that is? No. It's the most recognizable and used weapon in the world. It is also known as the AK-47. Well, if you, I mean, uh, this was one of the things that I learned in that class. Russia is a huge country. Huge. Huge. And so when you think about the different, you know, types of um, looks of types of people, uh, it really spans a a lot of different cultures. And so there's, you know, like Inuit, um, you know, if you will, folks, there's the blonde hair, blue eyed Russian there. You know, it's all walks of life. Well, this the region that he's supposedly from is the majority of Sunni Muslims. Mm. Yeah, so we have the guy's face, and it's pretty clear. Incredibly clear. I mean, I you would you would think that we were dealing with the situation of, like, um, uh, the Delphi murder, where you would just see this guy in a, in a hood, no face. Yeah, I mean, because that... I mean, that is the Delphi murder... That's hard. Not hard. I mean, it's a lot harder to see that. But look at this guy. You can see his face clear as day. That's him. Oh, my gosh. That's his face. And it matches the sketches that the surviving victims um, came out and said that he looked like. I mean, that's the sketch that some of the surviving victims gave. And that's him. So they think he is of Asian descent. And he is from that one part of russia hmm. so i mean you got to see this photo guys wow. that that is the killer right there yeah, clear, you know as I mean? day. Clear, clear as day and he's looking at the camera like oh shit yeah, he sees is that a it. camera whoops i mean his face is just so i mean you see every feature yep high definition everything he, so he's got very very dark brown or hair or black hair he's got i don't know i can't i don't think he maybe um asian but he could be like maybe inuit and he's i mean he's because he's got pretty big eyes yeah thick brows but a very light faint little mustache like he's going through puberty well i didn't mean to say he's asian like chinese or japanese he, i meant like any mongolian yeah, type yeah, of yeah, asian yeah. from yeah. that type of re- yeah. from that region of russia yeah 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 i mean and, and here you can really tell he's in his in his 20s I and mean, he's a young kid yeah so here's some information i pulled from the siberian times reporter dated the 4th of november 2013 they talk about how the police offered a 1 million ruple reward which is about thirty one thousand dollars, and that was in 2012 the women like i said were between 75 and 90 years old they do live alone 
and they do live off government pensions. He has killed 32 victims. Then he stopped in 2012 Mm -hmm. abruptly because he almost got caught. And then he starts back up 2018 and he's already logged about four more, probably a lot more. It's just really hard to find information on this guy for a serial killer that kills so many people. You would think there's at least the victims names. Right. But we can't even find that. So. Wow. It kind of makes me think that. He is being paid by the Russian Federation, but that's just speculation. I do want to say that he may be a copycat killer. Now, I don't know about this woman besides what I've researched for this story, but this right here is Satan in a skirt. What? That is her moniker. Her real name is Irina Gadimachuk, and I'm probably pronounced that correctly. Now, she is 46 years old now. She killed 17 elderly women in the exact same way. The only difference is instead of posing as a maintenance worker for the apartment, she posed as a social worker to come and do welfare checks on the elderly. But she gets access to their apartment. And her spree was also in the Ural district, which is the same as him. Okay. And she was jailed for 20 years. (laughs) That's it? That's it. Wow, that sounds like a sentence that you would give her, John. (laughs) (laughs) Holy shit, look at her. She's smiling now. She's out of prison. Honestly, at first glance, I thought that was Chrissy Teigen. Who? She's a, a model. She's married to John Legend. Oh, I don't know who that is, but she is actually, you can tell she kind of comes from wealth. She's pretty. Yeah. And she did her 20 years. So she's out now. (laughs) Yeah. Damn. That's why I'm saying. I think it's more of a Russian plot to kill the pensioners Hmm. because this guy, you saw him. He's bringing a clipboard with names. Come on, man. That's kind of ridiculous. Where's he getting that shit? (laughs) <laughs> I mean, it just, it, see, it still you seems... You can't just get that co- stuff off the internet, man. It's Like, very, you're just get, getting what from the government? Come no, on. No, could... I mean, you can, ha- you can hack that. Yeah, do you think that kid hacks? He probably doesn't even have a computer. I don't know. Do you think the KGB hired him? I think something in the or government... the FSB? Uh, I think that's what the, the new KGB is I think KGB this is a government called. plot, but I, I'm just speculating. I think the... I don't think it's a government plot. I think he wishes he was a part of the FSB. But he may be a copycat killer of this of um, the Satan in a skirt, which is kind of crazy because, you know, she killed 17. He's up to 36. Th- this is all speculation because no one knows this guy besides the high definition photo we have of his face. Clear but as day. The police get out and say that he may have grown up with a grandmother caretaker who probably molested him or some mm. somewhere or the other. And now he's kind of getting vengeance on all the old grannies in Russia. I don't know. That just sounds kind of ridiculous. I don't know, man. But the thing is, there's no information about this case besides what I can dig up here. So, so can you go back? So he killed nine people. D- yeah, he killed nine people. And this in, isn't in the co- what was it? Kazan region. In Kazan. Yeah. And then ha- he and then he stops. No, he doesn't stop. He just moves the locales. Okay, so this is all in the same year. Yeah. Still. So this is a one year period, and then he stops in 2012 in September, and then he's back again in 2018. Two, and how yeah, long does, exactly. he, does he kill in 2018? Well, and I'm where? about to go over that right now. Okay. Yeah. So he killed 32 in the one year period. Yeah. Okay. One survivor from August 2011, which I can't find in any information besides this one website. She says that her head was hit repeatedly from behind, which doesn't really sound like the same killer. But Mm. I believe this was one of the first. He did start in March and he usually strangles the victims, but he beat this woman in the head multiple times. She actually survived and she is the one that gave us that sketch. The sketch comes out, and then, only then, after the sketch comes out, do we get the CCTV footage. And as Nicole will tell you, I mean, it's a, a exact match almost. It's the same guy. Incredibly close. All right, this right here is from the Toronto Sun. 
The title of this is Has a Russian Serial Killer Volga Maniac Made Bloody Return? Now, this is dated June 11th, 2019. I'm going to summarize it here for you. It says, According to the Russian cops, the latest murders were eerily similar to the cold cases that have vexed them for years. The latest murders, a woman, 68, and check this out. Talk about escalating, like mm. the Golden State Killer, you know how he escalates. Mm. He started mm-hmm. as a Visalia ransacker, and then he escalates to murder. Check this out. Latest murders, a woman, 68, and her husband, of 72 years old, were strangled. Oh. So now he's doing couples. Three days later, about 170 kilometers away, another couple, 82 and 83, were axed in the head to death. Whoa. So, the, and he was only strangling people before. With yeah. That. So now he's getting more deranged. That is very similar to the Golden State Killer. It's crazy mm-hmm. because he's not. He's not doing this for monetary gain. He's not doing this for sexual pleasure. He's doing this almost as a, I don't know, a vengeance yeah. or something. Or he just really likes killing people. And for whatever yeah. reason, he really wants to kill old people. So the police now are offering a $65,000 reward to mm-hmm. catch this guy. Like I said, his face is clear as day, man. It's wow. uh, It's kind of crazy. It's like the first serial killer that has been caught on CCTV in high definition. And is still walking around. Still walking around. But that makes me think that he is kind of a vagrant. You know, he Could travels be. from place to place. Here, I'm going to show you You would that. just think that with, with an image so clear, somebody would have seen him. Yeah. This is a little bit about his description. And if you see the video, you can kind of see this for yourself. But this is from the Siberian Times reporter dated the 4th of November, 2013. Male, obviously, 22 to 35. Now he would be about 40 years wow. old, maybe. Yeah. 170 to 175 centimeters tall, which I believe is like six feet. He's slim build, has Asian features. And like Nicole said, it's more of the, uh, Ur- was Urdish or what'd you say? Um, uh, Mongolian mm-hmm. type of Asian? Like, yeah, like, yeah. The, well, Ural Mountains is, like, that's yeah, the yeah, region. Yeah, 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 Ural Mountains. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. where he was killing, yeah. 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 Um, his upbringing was in the city. That's hmm. speculation. I mean, they're trying to profile this guy. I don't know why they think that. Um, as yeah, the I wonder. City Maybe as it's his to, clothes. His, he's got, like, a hoodie yeah. and a, Maybe. you know. They believe he was brought up by an elderly female grandmother that either tortured or molested him or something i mean who knows yeah i guess that could make sense he is a loner and that's obvious because he hasn't been turned in by anybody yep and it, they actually have his foot size which is 40 to 41 wow is weird because over here it's like my foot size is uh like 11 and a half so i guess they use a different system yeah they do yeah and he is from low social wealth but I mean, guys, for someone that has killed 32 people and is continuing to kill this to this day, that's all you're going to get. That's all you're going to get from anybody, man. That is the all we know about this serial killer. If Do we have any listeners in Russia? I don't. Maybe we're banned in Russia. It's possible. I don't know. Say maybe we can help catch this guy. I don't know. I think he will be caught because, I mean, his face is on the freaking camera, man. And it's not like some grainy ass footage. This is like some high definition Google Nest Cam. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I can't you. I cannot believe how visible his features are. It's crazy. Yeah, but honestly, that's the story. That you is the story. You would think with enough like TikToks and Facebook out there that they would be able to just use fit the, a facial re- recognition software and find him. Yeah, but like I said, I mean, these are old people, you know? No, but just using the technology that's out there and, and matching his face with Yeah, I thought about swa- doing you that. You know, isn't but, like face swap a, a Russian? Yeah, but he, I don't think yeah. he has a face. I mean, if you did that to he's me, got, you wouldn't find me. He's got n- nothing. No, I mean. He doesn't seem like a kid with a social media profile. You never know. And yes, I say kid because he looks like a kid. Yeah, he does. You know, he, yeah, he's got just little whiskers on his face. So this kid that can barely shave, you know, got a little stubble on his go No, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's like too proud of his mustache to shave it off. Yeah. 
So that is the Volga Maniac. Wow. Definitely go to talkmore.com if you want to see the guy's face in high def. But that's crazy, man. I mean, I don't know what else to think besides that the uh, the Russians are kind of behind Do you think that this. there is an involvement? Yeah, I do. Hmm. 100%. Because, dude, I mean, think about it. Like, all right, for instance, and I didn't go into this, but, you know, in America, we're getting to a point where the triangle, the social triangle, right. if you will, which is used to be, and this is how it used to work, is the young people like us, these young gunners, you know, kind of, oh, I'm ready to tackle the world. We work our hardest. We put into Social Security and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So we can take care of the old timers that can't do anything because, you know, they can barely walk. Well, now people are living a lot longer. So that triangle, which was used to be tiny at the top of old people, is now becoming the broader section at mm -hmm. the top. And we're having more people live a lot longer. So that system really doesn't work anymore. Well, plus it's the baby boomers that are yeah. getting older and there's yeah. a lot of them. Well, the system really doesn't work anymore because if you got, let's say, 40% of the young guns putting in for 60% of the old people, that doesn't match up right. anymore. But it used to be different. So, I mean, I'm not saying that the Russians are involved, but... I mean, the dude is carrying a freaking in, in just clipboard. Starting to take him out. He's carrying a clipboard with addresses and names on it. I mean, dude, what? <laughs> I mean, I just I feel like it's clumsy. And plus, I don't know. there is I think no, he's a wannabe. Plus, there is no freaking news about this man. And the other girl that did this got twenty years. 20 years she killed 17 people got 20 years but that also years. could be biased because she's a female and they 20 years for 17 people they don't want they're give probably like all right you promised not to tell that we paid you to do this i'm just saying i don't know i don't know anyway that's that's what you're going to get on the volga maniac that is a, a story that i wanted to do and uh unfortunately that's all i can find there's no newspapers or anything out there is all man. It's Help just, us find this guy. And not only that, it's not really shared. So, for instance, the Daily Mail, they ran an article about it, maybe shared forty times. Wow. A couple comments, two or three comments. Like, it, it's not much interest. You're not. He's not going around killing a bunch of high school cheerleaders. Hmm. You know. Sad but true. Yeah, but that is um, tonight's story. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you haven't subscribed, you better do so right now because we got some great episodes coming up. And also um, go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash something. What is it? Talk Murder Me or something? Slash TM2M podcast. TM2M podcast, something like that. Find us there. Follow us. Nicole is the meme queen. I am. She gives billions of shares on her memes. I do. And they're super funny. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that is all we got for tonight. So thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit that subscribe button on whatever podcasting app you use. If you like this story, you can follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. If you're absolutely obsessed with this podcast and want to become our Volga Maniac, go to talkmer.com slash join. Become a Talco Supremo. Get a badass t-shirt, sticker, swag, a lot of love. Shout it out all over the place. Tell me what story you want me to do. I'll research it and I'll dedicate it to you right here on the Talk Murder Me podcast. My name is John here with Nicole. And until next time, good night, you lovely, lovely, lovely people.